Hello and welcome. Normally I would start a new video with a carousel shot of the model that I am about to restore. However, today I'm starting off slightly differently. The reason being is I've bought a new phone and the carousel phone stand that I have made from Lego is no longer fit for purpose because my new phone is larger than the old one. So before I can start this makeover, I have to quickly reconstruct a new phone holder. Now about a year ago, I bought some accent indoor paint for painting walls and ceilings. And because I bought some, I qualified to get this free can of uh, Lego type bricks. And I haven't opened it and I actually forgot that I had it, but I found it behind the shed the other day and I thought, you beauty, I can now make myself a new stand. So this is the first time I'm opening it. And it doesn't look like there's a lot of white bricks in there. I was rather hoping it would be more white than any other color because my original stands white and I'm, I like to make things that match. So to begin with, I'm just going to pick out all of the white bits that I can see. And I've deconstructed my old stand and now I am reconstructing or constructing a new one. Slightly larger in size to accommodate new phone. I ran out of white bricks there and I needed a top layer. So I had to use some red ones, which I think should look good because it will match my logo, which is on the front. So here's the new phone stand. Let's see how it works. Okay, that's not too bad. I may have to adjust it somewhat to get a, a better centralized picture, but it's good to be going on with. So this is the model that I am going to attempt to make over today. It is a 41B. A D-type Jaguar from the 1960s and uh, there was many variants of this model some of them came out with grey plastic wheels grey metal wheels wire spoked wheels like this one and um, some of them actually came out with red wheels red plastic wheels and if you got one of those they're worth a fair bit of money I believe so looking at this here, it's had a lot of play and it's been thrown around a bit in the toy box like normal. Very badly chipped up the paint. It's going to have to be stripped back and redone, obviously. Tires look a bit shabby. There's rust on the uh, axles and the spokes look a bit cruddy, for want of a better word. Looks like the driver lost his mind last time he went out in it. Probably under a low bridge or something at high speed. There's a close-up of the wheel. As I said, needs a bit of TLC. The stickers or decals will be a little bit awkward to replace as I haven't been able to source any that look similar to the genuine ones. Um, now this was a gift from a viewer a few years ago now. It was number seven. And uh, that was when I just started making notes of who was who in the zoo and uh, writing down notes about who gave me some of that. So this is from Ken Bolt. So thank you, Ken. He was also kind enough to send me a spare driver. So give me a fighting chance to fix this one up. First up, I've got to drill out those rivets in the bottom, of course. Now this is rather longer than normal, this video, because I'm going to show all the steps back to basics, if you will, and uh, remind everyone of how to do it. Now, this is our beautiful new kitten called Smudge, and we love him to bits. He's from a home, a cat's home, so we rescued him. And uh, the best cat ever. I love him to bits. I don't ever want to give him up, because he's so gorgeous. So, to begin with today, I'm drilling out these rivet posts in the bottom with those small drills. You see, I had a selection of them, and I picked the one that I felt was suited for the purpose. Um, when I've taken off the larger end of the rivet, the theory is that with a small bladed flat screwdriver, you can just simply lever the base off. 
with minimal effort, but this one was clinging on for dear life. Maybe I should have used a slightly larger drill. But it does come off eventually. Now it will reveal itself to be incredibly corroded on the inside. Something I haven't seen too many times in the past. And you can see that the driver is connected to the base. Here's one thing I noticed. The wheels were a bit sloppy on this model. And uh, I've noticed that the axle support points are broken. Two of them are broken. Which uh, is probably the reason why it had, had a little bit lopsided lean on it. Uh, when it was just sitting there before I pulled it apart. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of all this yuckiness out of there. I don't know how, I don't know where all this materials come from because the actual model itself looks fine. So I don't think that this is the model, model metal that's corroded. I don't know quite what it is. It looks a bit like copper sulfate. Anyway, I've cleaned all that out. I'm going to chuck that away. I've got to take these wheels off and axles before I can work on it. Um, this one here I thought would be quite easy because because it's broken I could poke it all the way through but I can't use my standard practice or method which is uh, where I rotate the I let I let the axle rotate against the grinding tool. Uh, today I had to move the grinding tool around the axle because it wouldn't spin because it was in there on an angle you see it's also got a bit of a bend in it too uh, I have to be straightening that out before I put it back in here's another sh shot of that uh, broken axle support point gonna have to fix that somehow not looking forward to it now I'm just showing you again I just take the bare minimum of metal off the end of the axle they're very tight this one there's not a lot protruding so what i've done is i've taken the tire off today so that the hub can move a little bit closer to the base of the model and give me just a fighting chance of grinding that end off without destroying the wheel and i managed to do it just now looking at this What's left of the man is just his top half of his torso and his arms and the steering wheel. No head. I'm trying to get it out and I, I don't know how it's attached. I imagine it was just force fitted in there. Hammered in place maybe in the factory. And uh, it's extremely tight to get out. And I was on the point of giving up and then boom it came out. And you can see how it's attached. It's uh, the uh, Mark 1 square peg in a square hole sort of set up probably got a bit of a taper on it too to make it grip anyway that's out and um moving on decided i'm going to take all of the tires off because they're very rigid a little bit brittle and uh i'm going to be cleaning the spoked wheels and i don't want the tires getting damaged by the chemicals i'm going to be using so just as a precaution i'm going to take the tires off and just to make it a little bit easier, I'm putting them in some hot water and the tires come off really easy when they're warm because obviously they're made of some kind of plastic or rubber material and they're very, they've dried out, they're very solid and brittle, but when they've immersed into the warmer water there, they come off quite easily. Now I've got to drill out those holes so that I can put some little screws in there to put the base back on when I've finished uh, painting it, etc. So I'm getting out my little toolkit here that I use. It's got the right size drill on that little chuck. And this here is a tap for cutting the screw thread that will accept the screw when I put the base back on. So I use that additional drill chuck to hold the drill because it's so fine that most of my drills won't grip it with the standard chuck 
so I've had to get that little extra one. Come in quite handy. I think it might have been on eBay, I can't remember, I can only imagine. It's a long time ago now. So when you're drilling through here, make sure you get it dead center if you can and don't go too far. One model I did go right the way through and out the other side. Uh, that was a long time ago now. So when I think I've gone deep enough, I just tap the thread by hand and a little bit of firm pressure. And you can see I dip the tip of the tool in some oil there just to give it a bit of lubrication. And there you can see the actual material that this tool has removed from the hole and it has made the screw thread. I'm using these domed headed 2M hex screws, hex head screws, a hex head, I don't know. They've got a hex hagging on hole. God, try saying that. And um, I've got this little tool here for putting them in with the tiny hex key in there, Allen key bit. And I'm making sure they sit flush to the top of the post because if you don't drill deep enough and you don't tap deep enough, they will sit proud. And that means that when you put the base back on, it won't be solid, it will be a little bit loose and you have to redo it. So it's worth taking your time and having a go. It's quite easy to do, so long as you uh, don't rush it. So now that I've tapped those holes and put those screws in, and I know that they fit, I'm going to address the base. I'm hoping to repair that with some of this muggy weld. Now, I did do a test on a scrap model before I did this and it worked really well. This one went a little bit haywire. Like when I first did it, it was one dollop of that muggy weld landed exactly in the right spot and set immediately. And I thought I could repeat it on camera, but alas, it didn't happen. So I've given myself a bit of a job there because there's way too much metal there now and I have to file and grind it down to a point where it looks like it is the original base. Set myself a hell of a task here. I'm using a combination of this little Dremel with the grindstone on the end of it and uh, this is a half round filer. Don't know why I'm using a half round one but could have just used a normal flat file and um, with the aid of the magnifying lens and some good lighting I managed to get it looking not too bad but you won't see it because it will be hidden once it's reassembled but at least it will be retaining the axles how it's uh, supposed to be so these decals are going to be a little bit of a problem I've looked online and a lot of them well in fact all of them um, do not look like the genuine font probably because this font is a unique matchbox font that doesn't exist anymore so um, i'm going to try and duplicate some make some of my own that would be challenging so i'm just making some notes there i noticed it was 7.2 millimeters in diameter so i'm going to strip the paint off now first time ever with this citrus stripper and interestingly it says it's citrus scented yummy and yet it's harmful if inhaled so you're not allowed to smell it but it smells good according to the label and it's citrusy so as i said i usually use that dangerous stuff the uh, well i don't know if it's dangerous but i know it burns if you get it on your finger the um poly stripper paint stripper so I thought I'd give this citrus strip a test. A lot of modelers are using it at the moment. And um, this is the first time I've seen a can of this in Australia. And um, I'm hoping it's going to do the job. So I'm going to leave it there because it's not as quick as the, the poly stripper stuff. And I'll go make myself a cup of tea and uh, let it cook a while and see when I come back as to whether the paint has uh, come off or not. So going back, and you wouldn't believe it, that dirty cat has left a bloody mess in my hobby room.
So anyway, I've cleaned up that mess. It's disgusting, wasn't it? And uh, now I've got another mess to clean up. It's this gooey paint and citrus stripper and stuff here in the disposable container I've got. And you know what? Look at that. It's not really doing a very good job. It took the label off. Took the decal off, no worries. But the paint is not being affected as, as well as I would have liked. So I'm going to have to try and give it another one. double whammy. This time I'm absolutely saturating it in it. And I'm going to try putting a little lid on there, just a bit of card. And hopefully, maybe the fumes will do the trick. And uh, I must admit, I was very pleased to come back an hour later and it does actually look like something has happened. And uh, yes, indeed, I can report that the paint is lifting off the model, which is a good thing. So I'm going to wash the model now in some hot soapy water and get all that citrus strip and old paint off. Let's have a go here. Speed it up for you. It's very time consuming this hobby. I, I know you think it looks simple. Pull a car apart, paint it, put it back together again. But it's all these little things that trip you up. Well, there you go. It came up pretty good. There's still some little bits clinging on on the inside. I'll work on those. And here we go. This is the totally stripped model. And not a lot of detail on it, is there? And there's a heck of a seam along the edge there that's quite pronounced and, and jagged looking. Well, some people would get rid of it, but I try and keep them original. So I'm leaving it on there. I am quite disappointed though. I mean, this obviously this is a 1960s model, very early on in the game. And uh, yeah, the... Matchbox at this stage hadn't reached the high level of detail that you come to expect from them. I'm going to paint it today with this can of Tamiya and it's racing green. It should be a perfect match, I hope. And uh, it also means that I don't have to use my airbrush, which needs cleaning and all that. So about the stickers, I have emailed myself a photograph I took of the original one that was on the, on the model. There it is. So I'm going to load it into PaintShop Pro and have a play around with it and see whether I can make my own stickers. Now this model came out with a few other numbers apparently. There was a there was the 41 which I've got but there was also a 5 and a 6 and they're a bit rarer. And I have heard a rumour that there's a 3 out there somewhere, but I have no proof. So this is my attempts at cleaning up the original image and making it look more like the original. <laughs> and uh, I'm using this inkjet white paper to print them out. And I've printed loads out there because um, I'll tell you in a minute, but before I can cut them out and use them, I have to coat the ink from the printer with some of this clear coat. And that will prevent the ink from bleeding when I immerse the decals into water. Now, to cut out a circle is particularly difficult. I've tried before and failed. So I bought myself this punch set. Now, because those stickers are 7.2 millimeters wide in diameter, I thought I'd grab out an 8 mil, uh, sorry, a 7 mil punch, but you wouldn't believe it. I've got all of them except for the 7 mil. So I'm going to go 8 mil and hopefully no one will notice. I'm trying, to begin with, I'm trying these ones with a bit of a green background on them. Now let's see how that looks. And I'll give them a couple of strikes with a hammer on this cutting board. And failed miserably. So I try again. And this time I'm off the cutting board, I'm just on the cutting mat. And it works a lot better because the cutting edge of the punch seems to go through the paper a little bit easier on that softer cutting area. 
Now, looking at it, I, I'm thinking I probably shouldn't be using the ones with the green background. Instead, I'm going to use the ones with no green background. So it would just be a white circle with a number in it. I'll give that a couple of, couple of taps and let's have a look and see how that one looks. Poke it out with a drill. Um, no. It's off center, doesn't look good. So I'm going to have to try again. And I try again and again and again and again and again. And I make three that I'm happy with. See, there's another failure. That one's to the right and down. But these ones here are quite acceptable. So I am thinking they might look all right on there. Um, like I'm saying, if they should be just over seven mil. These are eight mil, according to the according to the punch. So they're going to be slightly bigger than the original, unfortunately. Now I'm in my paint booth. I've got the fan on, the light on, and I'm painting with this can of Tamiya. I don't often use cans, and I'm trying to be as light as possible. But this paint just floods out of the can. Even though I've just given it a quick burst, it seems really, really thick and it's kind of hiding. I mean, there's not a lot, lot of detail to see. But I thought it was hiding the detail a little, little bit too much. So what I did was I stripped it back and painted it again. So it took twice as long as it should have. And I think it might be okay. We won't know until the end. Now, these wheels are a little bit shabby. All the spokes, the, those tiny little spokes have got like dust and foreign matter trapped in them. So I'm going to use this ultrasonic cleaner and some of this uh, cleaning solution and see if I can make them look better under the microscope. Now here's a tip somebody gave me a long time ago. If you want to save on the cleaning solution, what you do is you put the cleaning solution in a small vessel, like this jar, and then you suspend that little jar in water in the ultrasonic cleaner. And apparently the ultrasonic waves travel through the water, hit the glass, go through the glass, and through the cleaning fluid. So you don't have to fill up this ultrasonic cleaner with half a litre of cleaning solution. You only have to use a little bit in the jam jar. That's the theory. So I'm going to drop these wheels in there and switch this on for five minutes or so. Now these are default settings here. It's 40 degree desired temperature of the solution and the actual temperature at the moment is 22 degrees. So I'll set it for five minutes, it probably won't have enough time to heat up to 40 degrees anyway. So after I switched it on, you can see that the waves are pulsating in the vessel and it's uh, cleaning away. It's finished, it's for five minutes is up. So time to fish them out. I thought I'd be smart here and use this little grill as a sieve, as I couldn't find a sieve. And what do you know, they fall through the holes in the sieve. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that didn't work too well. I thought maybe they'd melted, but no, there's two in the bottom. Uh, fish them out, very fiddly, very small. Got the tweezers there. And uh, give them a dry and let's have a look at them. See whether they uh, look a little bit cleaner. Oh, wow. Um, well, there's certainly all the little holes are redefined. There's no crud in the holes. And I'm hoping to give them a bit of a paint. I'm going to have to paint them with some chrome ink or something. I've got a chrome pen, so I might do that. I'm going to put them on this little table vise that I acquired from somewhere. I don't know where. It's got cocktail sticks in it. 
So I sit the whirls over the cocktail sticks and then I use a little tiny bit of this and I, I, I'm so wasteful. This stuff's so expensive and I've put 10 times as much as I need there and I didn't realise but a little bit of this stuff goes a, a long way. Uh, just give them a very light brush over with them, turn them over, do the other side. And this um, chrome ink is just the best thing for painting stuff chrome. I can't remember who recommended it. Somebody recommended it once. I bit the bullet and bought some and uh, never looked back. And it's lasted me four years so far. So I'm going to try and match this colour tan of the original driver and I've got these various cans now the labels are all wrecked because I had to use vices and uh, pliers to get the lids off. There's the tyres I've given them a black wash just to sort of spruce them up a bit and here is the painted man which did look that mustard colour until it dried but just for the hell of it I'll show you the colours I used so those two Mr Hobby ones I blended them together and it looked great when I first put it on but it dried slightly darker uh, you know where do you stop I've decided to replace these axles one because they're rusty and bent but two because because I cut them down ground the ends off and they were barely long enough to reform I uh, swapped them for some slightly longer ones that I had in stock so hopefully I won't have too many problems down the track putting them back together uh, being lazy here I didn't put these in hot water I just snapped them on and thankfully they didn't break the tires of course I'm talking about um, they look as good as new, really. Quite pleased with those. So, into the shed. And uh, I've got to put these wheels on, so I hold the axle with some small pliers to prevent the axle from spinning. And then I use these two little nail punches in my drill press. And it's funny, I have to consciously hold with my left hand that axle. In the past, because I'm concentrating on the pressure on my right hand, brain switches off and I've, I've let go. So I've learned to sort of split my brain there and do two things at once. Hold the axle and pull on the drill press. And that's the end result. It just burrs that end over just a tiny amount. This one here I did and then I looked at it and it was too long. So I cut it off and did it again. Better too long than too short, I always say. Yeah, see there's a bit of a gap there and I thought, oh, that doesn't look, that doesn't look genuine. So I did it again. So here's the man back in his seat, steering, holding the steering wheel. Don't know if he's got a helmet on. I don't know if that's supposed to be a helmet or a weird head. Oh. Well, now I've just got to take these screws out and look at that. They're color matched, which looks great. Um, at a glance, they look like original rivets when you turn the model over. It just adds a little extra detail to the finish got to make sure i put that round the right way otherwise he'll be losing his head again that just sits on there oh, it's a beautiful green color isn't it that british racing green is just gorgeous i'd like to say it was one of my favorite colors but i don't really have favorite colors but if i did have that green would be one of them That base, by the way, I didn't film that. 
I uh, cleaned it, sanded it down a little bit, and um, painted it with some satin black out of a can. It was, oh, there's those rivets. Look at them. They're great, aren't they? Well, this thing looks starting to look really beautiful again. I'm happy with that. Just now is the time to put on the decals and this model will be finished. I'm using some of this decal set and softening solution to hopefully get the, the little decals to sit flat. Now these are uh, white. No, not white backed, is it? Yes, it's white backed decal paper I'm using. So you peel off the backing sheet and the, the printing is on a white decal material on the front. And they seem to take, I don't know whether it's because it's old. I mean, I've had this these papers for a couple of years now. I don't know if it's old, but they seem to take forever to separate the decal from the backing sheet. And they're not like normal professional decals. They're very fiddly to separate and to handle without tearing them. Um, if I could have, I would have bought some professional ones. But I think these are probably as good as you could buy. Maybe they're the wrong size, but <laughs> apart from that, they're pretty good. I um, actually think they look better than the originals. Look at that. What a sweet little model. So time for the final reveal. And this is what it looked like before I started. You can't even see there's a driver in there. It's like he's hiding in there. But he's there, all right? He's just got no head. So a bit of TLC. New paint job, chrome paint, blackened tires, new decals, new driver for this season. And um, overall, I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. It's a beautiful model. It's in its simplicity. It's kind of, it has a charm of its own. These old models do, well, they do to me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, please like and subscribe. And um, feel free to come back and see my next makeover, which hopefully will be up shortly. So until then, I've just got one last job to do today. And that is to remind Smudge that he is no longer welcome. So until next time, this is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeover saying thanks for coming. And I will see you again. Goodbye.